Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you a brand new version of our flagship kayak design, the F1. So anyways, starting off here, if you're not familiar with the F1 kayak, this is basically the kayak that I designed for myself as an experienced coastal paddler. It's quick, it's stable, it's maneuverable, it's extremely efficient at normal cruising speeds, it doesn't weathercock, and it surfs like a banshee. And all those performance attributes come together to make this a really good kayak for experienced coastal paddlers, but also just a really good kayak for beginning paddlers as well, because who doesn't need stability, maneuverability, and resistance to weather cocking. And for those reasons, this has become our most versatile and our most popular kayak design. Over a thousand of these have been built all over the world. Right now, the F1 comes in seven different sizes, and it also comes in four different versions. And today we're gonna be adding a fifth version to that, which is an F1 with a flatter front deck. So what this new version of the F1 is, is first, the same hull shape as any other F1, so it should have the same on the water performance, but it exchanges the curved deck beams and the central deck ridge in the front of the kayak for flatter deck beams and two parallel deck ridges ahead of the cockpit here. And this has some pretty significant disadvantages and some pretty significant advantages as well. And which one you choose just depends on what you wanna do with your kayak. So starting out with the disadvantages, the obvious thing that reducing the height of this front deck does is it interferes with your ability to pack the front of the kayak with gear. And one of the things that I'm most proud of on my modern kayaks is that I designed the forward cargo space around the flotation and gear bags. So all you have to do is pack that forward bag full of gear, pull back your foot braces, and you can just slide the whole gear bag forward and it fits perfectly, and then you can lock it in with the foot braces. So it's a little bit painful for me personally to lose that forward cargo area. And it's not to say that you can't camp out of this flatter deck version. It just means that you're gonna have to carry less stuff and you're gonna have to really work on the shaping of your float bags before you push them in. And it's gonna be more like camping out of any other skin boat, which is gonna be a little bit frustrating. Now, another potential issue with this flatter deck version is that it might not shed water quite as easily as the normal ridge deck version. And I don't think this is gonna be an issue in most normal paddling circumstances, but where it could become a problem is if you're someone that does a lot of coastal paddling where you have to punch out through big surf, because in that case, if you hit a foam pile that's big enough that it engulfs your bow, this kind of a shape is gonna get pinned down and it's gonna destabilize the kayak a little bit and it's gonna direct a lot more hard water into your face and chest than the ridged deck design, which does a pretty remarkable job of just continuing to climb through that foam pile, both because of the shape and also because of the significant extra volume that it adds to the kayak up here. So this may not be the best choice for really hardcore coastal surf paddlers. Also something that's a little bit of a minor quibble, but it's pretty important to me personally, is that a full size spare Greenland paddle doesn't fit nearly as cleanly on the front deck of this version as it does on my normal version. And I am a huge proponent of always having a full size spare Greenland paddle locked down on the front deck, specifically underneath leather deck lines and a toggle. That way it's not gonna come off the deck if I end up in a really kind of violent situation in the surf. But if I need it at any moment, I can just reach forward, grab that paddle and roll up with it without having to fuss with two separate pieces or God forbid, two pieces of a paddle on the back deck here. So that's once again, probably not an issue for most people, but it's a little bit of an issue for me. So one final potential downside to this flatter decked version is that the extra complexity is gonna add between two to four hours of extra build time to the project, and the extra wood is gonna add between one half to one pound of extra weight. And I know that both those things probably don't seem like a very big deal, but for me personally, as a fierce minimalist, the idea of adding an extra pound and an extra four hours, if I don't specifically need this functionality for something, just seems kind of superfluous and pretty unacceptable. So I guess what I'm saying here is that if you don't need the flat deck version for something, you should probably just build the standard version because it's gonna be easier to build, it's gonna be lighter, it's gonna have much better cargo room, and you're just not doing extra things and adding extra weight for no reason. 
So I think that's probably a pretty good segue into talking about some of the reasons that you might want to choose this flat deck version here. And the first thing I want to get out of the way is why I built this in the first place. Because just like all my design experiments, this was in response to a very specific need. And that is, I want to try to use the skin on frame canoe catamaran system that I invented to catamaran two skin on frame kayaks side by side. And if you're not familiar with what that is, the skin on frame canoe catamaran system is something that I developed while I was developing my nesting canoes. It actually was an offshoot of a self rescue system that allows a canoeist to do a paddle float rescue like a sea kayaker. And then it evolved into a way for two boats to be set up side by side in a way that's stiff enough that it's enjoyable to paddle, but still flexible enough that it can ride over waves and rough water without damaging the boats or coming apart. And that particular system has been an incredible amount of fun. Myself and my partner have used it to sail side by side running downwind. We've also used it to run whitewater rivers. My students have really enjoyed it with their families. Some people have used it for older people or people with mobility issues or disabilities. So it was only natural to want to try to do that with some sea kayaks because sea kayaks give you much better rough water performance and there's a possibility to push the catamaran performance into even higher winds and bigger waves if you're into that sort of thing or if you just want to be out on peaceful calm water it could potentially stabilize two of these kayaks side by side in a way where you could even stand up and fish out of them or it might be fun to play with kids or just anywhere else you need a nice stable platform on the water so the reason that i decided to build this flat deck here is because i thought i would need these two side-by-side -side deck ridges here or perhaps the flat area in front of them to be able to attach the front catamaran board. But having now tried to do this on a pair of my standard kayaks and seen that it actually worked out pretty well, it's not clear to me that you even need the flat deck to do the kayak catamaran. Now, I can't say that for sure. I've got to actually build and test both systems side by side for the rest of this year in a variety of conditions and we'll see who is the ultimate winner there. Now, another thing that kind of peripherally relates to what I was just talking about with sailing is that the flatter forward deck up there does give me a slightly more advantageous geometry for the two stay system that I like to use on the kayak sailing system I'm developing right now. Now, it's not such a big advantage that I think it should guide your choice versus whether you want to put a sail on the regular version or whether you want to put a sail on the flat decked version here. But if you're already building the flat decked version for some other reason, that's just kind of an added bonus. I think the main point of functionality for anybody who isn't necessarily concerned about catamaran functionality or sailing is just that this flat deck in front of the cockpit here gives you a really superior place to do all sorts of non-kayak related activities. So for example, let's say you're someone that's really into photography and you've got a big pelican case that's not going to fit in your lap. You could potentially mount that here. If you're someone that's into fishing or someone that's into hunting, this is going to be a little bit more of a functional area. Just to give you an example from my personal past, something that I used to do a lot of in the F1 kayak is I would go out crabbing. Basically, I would stack three crab traps on the back deck. I would tie them down. I would punch out through the surf and then I would very carefully reach behind me and untie those crab traps drop them down and then four hours later I'd come back and pick them up and put them on the front deck of the F1 and I'd sort through the crabs and then I'd put them in my uh, spray skirt and it was always just really kind of challenging because that front deck arrangement is not very good for that particular use but if I had had this flat deck it would have made crabbing so much easier and so much more fun and so if you're someone that has a good reason to have this flat area up here and that reason supersedes your need for the cargo room that you're going to be losing in the front, this could be a really good system for you. Now, the last thing I want to talk about here is something I don't really even want to talk about, and that is the aesthetics. In my experience, the aesthetics of the normal F1 or the LPB are pretty polarizing. People either love how they look or they hate how they look. A lot of people want a lower, swoopier look coming up off the deck of a kayak. Personally, I don't care at all about that because I can't see a kayak while I'm paddling that kayak. And in that case, aesthetic considerations just have to do with whether I look cool or not to my friends, which is something I don't really care about. And so for me personally, aesthetics don't factor into it. But if you're someone who prefers that lower swoopier look, 
this might give you that, although once again, you can't actually see that while you're paddling. So uh, I think that covers all the advantages and the disadvantages to this new flat decked version here. And I just wanna finish out this video by taking you on a quick tour of this specific kayak. All right, so real quick whirlwind tour of this boat. This kayak is actually framed and built a lot more heavily than my normal boats are. This has a 12 ounce nylon skin on it. And I've also added a brass rub strip around the bottom and even a liquid keel strip around the bottom of the boat as well for extra durability. This isn't something I would normally do for my own boats. It's just something I was doing as an experiment on this kayak. I've also colored this boat with rare earth pigment as opposed to acid dye. And acid dye does give you much more vibrant colors, but they do tend to deteriorate a little more quickly with UV exposure. And the nice thing about rare earth pigments is that even though they don't start off very exciting, they actually warm up and richen over time. And so this boat right here is nothing to write home about right now, but by the end of the summer, it's actually gonna be a beautiful kind of coffee brown color. Now, coming back a little bit further on the deck here, you can see the sailing system that I'm developing right now. I've got the mast step, some attachment points, and a carbon fiber mast right here. This is something that's been in process for a couple years. I'm hoping that the system will be ready to release by August of 2022. I've also got some plastic plates here, which are just one of several possible catamaran attachment points for the flat decked version. And then you can see I've got a perimeter line coming through here. This just happens to be a reflected perimeter line, but I also sell non-reflective. And then back here, I've got this little bungee loop, which is actually pretty darn handy. For most of my deck rigging, I prefer leather or rope, but once in a while, a bungee loop can be really useful. And then coming a little further back on the deck, you can see my standard leather and toggle deck line system. I've also got this special little tie down that also functions as a sheet cleat for my sail system. My uphaul cleat over here, got the perimeter line coming through right here. And then coming into the cockpit, I'm actually only shipping out double lipped keyhole cockpits this year. This gives you an extra quarter inch of purchase for better spray skirt attachment and also sea sock compatibility. We've got a brand new back band that I had custom built specifically for these boats. And then looking down in here, you can't see this very well, but I've got a suspended seat. This is something I came up with last year and I'm putting it on all my own personal boats these days just because I feel like it's a lot more comfortable and it's not that hard to build. And taking a quick peek forward in the cockpit here, you can see these Select style foot braces. These are brand new for our system. These things are great for a bunch of different reasons that I'm gonna talk about in an upcoming video. Also, you can see this pocket hanging down here. And this is a storage thing that I'm prototyping for the flat decked version only that gives you a place you can put a bilge pump or maybe a map or food or anything else you wanna have quick access to on the water. This one happens to be attached with Velcro, but I'm also experimenting with snaps right now. Whichever one performs the best over time is what's ultimately gonna make it into the system. And then coming up onto the back deck, you can see how the catamaran system is starting to take shape. This is far from the finished version, so please don't duplicate this based on what you're looking at here. But the basic idea is I've got a couple bungee loops, I've got a couple plastic plates, and then I can take a catamaran board and slide it underneath here, just like if you were sliding a paddle under for a paddle float rescue. It gets captured by some sort of attachment method here, and it ends up being fairly stiff but it still flexes enough that the boat can travel over waves without breaking the boat or damaging the boards here. So this system is evolving right now. Please do not duplicate this based on what you're looking at. I just kind of wanted to show you where this whole thing is headed. And then also you can see that this gives me a really convenient routing point for my perimeter lines to come through here. And that gives me really great grab points if I have to do a cowboy style self rescue. Now, the straps and toggles are not going away. This is just one option. And if you're ordering a kit from me, you can actually select whether you wanna go with this type of a back deck setup, or you wanna go with the more traditional strap and toggle setup. And then coming a little bit further back, something that I'm personally really stoked about is I finally decided on a mounting system and location that works really well for action camera filming from the back deck. So you can see that this arm just fits over this little ball here, gives me a huge amount of travel for my GoPro, for a variety of different shots, and I can reach all the controls from the cockpit. So I'm gonna go into this a lot more in a separate video. And then finally, all the way at the back here, you can see I've installed a drain plug. This is not 100% necessary, but it is nice to have sometimes. The only word of caution I would tell you is that if you're gonna put a drain plug in your skin boat, keep in mind that even though these do hold themselves in pretty well, 
they also aren't very hard to pull out. So if you're gonna get a drain plug for your skin boat, get an extra plug and put it in your PFD. That way when you do ultimately lose your plug, you'll have a spare and you don't have to worry about trying to find stuff to stuff in this hole so you can make it home without sinking. All right, so lots of cool, interesting stuff on this kayak here, but keep in mind that this is a highly modified boat. And just because I put all this stuff on this particular kayak doesn't mean I do it on every kayak or that necessarily you should do it on your boat. Basically, I just wanted to show you some of the cool stuff that's happening right now with the system. And if you wanna learn more about that, I've got a separate video that I'm working on right now that goes into a ton more detail about all these rigging options and a bunch of other stuff that we didn't talk about in this video. So if you wanna see that, I'll make sure to throw up a card right now so you can check that video out. And I think that's pretty much all I have to say. So if you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I guess there's also a notification bell I'm supposed to tell you to click. I don't know, I'm old, I don't know how to use the internet. You can also find me on my website, capefalconkayaks.com, where I've got a bunch more skin on frame building video courses, plan sets, and various free skin on frame resources. You can find us on Instagram at Cape Falcon Builds, where I post a daily build blog of everything I'm working on here in the shop. And just like I say every time, even if you're not normally a social media person, I would really encourage you to check out the Instagram channel because there is so much more cool stuff there than ever shows up on YouTube and sometimes not even in my website or in my paid courses. So if you like skin on frame and you like to see experimental ideas, Instagram is gonna show you all the weird things that I'm always working on here, some of which end up not working out, some of which end up becoming part of our system. Okay, that's it. Take care, be safe on the water, have fun building your skin boat.